Welcome to Screen Printing Artist. Um, I'm going to work on today, show a couple different effects that you guys can use to create designs for a bunch of different types of industries. One thing I want to mention right off the bat before I dive into the video is um, I'm real excited to start a new course. So I'm starting a new course. Um, any of my regular subscribers on YouTube, of course, are welcome. Um, and bring your friends. So it's going to be a Screen Printing Artist. I'll uh, just to make it simple, I call it the Corel Draw Zero to Sixty Boot Camp. It's obviously it's geared more towards screen printers, um, and we're going to cover a lot of exciting stuff. If you want to learn more, go to ScreenPrintingArtist.com. So let's go ahead and start here. Let's go ahead and kick out. And what we're going to learn in this video, we're going to look at is a couple different things. One is um, a lot of people ask me where I get textures and different things that I do. Um, a simple way to start with textures is to get public domain photos um, completely royalty free, rights free. You can get them off of uh, different public domain posted websites. Um, this one is a digital pattern that I got from a public domain photo and I just converted to grayscale and then I traced it. So I got some nice texture in there and then I just took a public domain wood photo, compressed it like in my previous distress video and created this distress pattern. So we use both of these in this video. Obviously this is for a boot camp, like a fitness boot camp. Um, this is a logo that we're starting with. Uh, if I go to wireframe, you can see uh, you know the pieces that are involved here. So this is our wireframe kind of logo. And we've got this we got this boot camp uh, font that was just a stencil font that I tweaked a little bit, but I didn't do a whole lot. I just cut it a little bit cleaner on a couple pieces. But uh, so that's already ready to go. So the things I'm going to show in this video, I want to get this into place and kind of move this over here but then I really wanted to show how to do a chain border. Now a chain border is kind of a fun thing to do in Corel. It's kind of a cool effect and it'll play off nice off this like camel pattern hopefully and we're going to create a couple dog tags here real quick. So let's go ahead and get this rolling. You take this camel pattern. Now when you want to create a power clip we're going to put this into my boot camp thing. So I wanted to cut over see where there isn't any letters. So that's that's a goal there and you hold the shift key down it'll slide so you can kind of go here and you watch where it hits. See how it hits that M right there? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I control Z, move it back, and then I'm going to slide here, hold the shift key, and then I right click on the mouse and that duplicates it there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this. Once I get this other piece, I'm going to drag this over and do the same thing, right click there. And now this pattern is going to kind of, now you see how there's lines in between the pattern though? We don't really want those. I'm going to group them. So I select them all, I'm going to group them. I'm going to put it down. Um, control page down so I put it behind everything and then I'm going to go ahead and hit effects um, here and we're going to go power clip place inside frame I'm using Corel Draw 7 on this on this um, video and then you click and you place it inside the frame but you'll notice if I zoom in here you can say oh that's kind of cool but you notice a couple things one is you know you see these lines here I don't really want those lines so I'm going to zoom in um, I'm going to stay zoomed in. I'm going to hold the control key. I'm going to click into the power clip. So I click into the shape. Now it zooms me into the power clip. You can see where they overlap here. So there's that line cutting through the M. That's what I don't want. So I'm going to hold the control key down. I click into it. So I clicked into a child group. And now I can grab this child group handle. Let me zoom out so you can see that a little better. So when you click into a group, so if you click the whole group, then it's got all three pieces. But if I hold the control key, I can select just one piece of the group, right? And that's useful if I want to kind of move things around a little bit. Now I've got a little space to play here, and I kind of want to cut that line here. So I got, I got maybe enough space in this child group to kind of move it over. And we'll see if it hits. Uh, let me see if I can nudge it. I don't want to nudge the whole thing. I'm going to go in the child group here. Now hold the shift key. I'm going to nudge this over. I don't want to hit... See where that blue line with the O is? I don't want to hit that O, but I could probably what I could probably just do is grab this handle and make sure it's in the middle here. That way that line doesn't hit. And it won't affect the texture too much. And then I can kind of drag this one, hold the control key, drag this one, and kind of make this one fall into that gap too. And that way our power clip is going to be pretty clean here. Now if it looks like the texture isn't uh um you know, there's, it's too fat. You could shrink these. You could fit them a little tighter so you could have a little more texture in the, in the letters. But I'm going to kind of let it go like it is now. So I just hit the control key and then I clicked off of the edge of my image. It goes, zooms out of the power clip. And now here's my, here's my boot camp lettering right there with a, that kind of digital um, camo in it. So that's kind of cool. 
and then we have our we have our logo here kind of move that up to the middle um, you know if we want it centered you hold the shift click here and then you just hit the C key to center them so you make sure it's right in the middle here and then I'm gonna kind of bump it down so it overlaps a little bit I just hold the shift key nudge it down a little bit this way um, I don't like things too symmetrical so we'll just cant it a little bit give it a little bit of a flare here um, nudge it over and then we're going to create that nice kind of chain border. Let's see how to do that. Obviously, this is going on black shirt, so it should pop pretty well. Now, when you create this chain border, it's going to be a chain border for dog tags. Now, there's different types of chains, right? Um, there's anchor style chains, and there's uh, the chains that most dog tags have like a beaded chain to them. So it depends on if you want it to be real accurate here or if you want to create like an anchor chain. Now, I'm just drawing this with a mouse. Some of you folks might you have you have a stylus pen that'd be a little friendlier, you know. I just want to create a loose kind of border here that'll wrap around but not be too clean. And you can connect it. It's usually a good idea to connect to do this effect. Um, and now I'm just going to look at my board and see if there's any really clunky spots. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. And you can adjust the way that your freehand draws this as well. If I want to see my border a little clearer, maybe I'll I'll hit the red button just to see. Now if there's any shapes where it's really awkward, you know, or if I feel like it's going to hit the space too much, maybe there's some nodes I'll delete, you know, to smooth it out a little bit. This bump here I'm not I'm too crazy about. It's not that bad, but you know, maybe I just want to bump it a little bit or uh, maybe, and a lot of times one thing that really helps smooth things out is if you create a node and then you delete the node next to it. It just kind of averages it, right? So that's a nice way if you want to smooth a corner out. Um, you just create a node that's, and then you delete the node that's next to it. See how that kind of averages, smooths it out a little bit. Now, we might go ahead and just go ahead and use this path now. Um, I created two new nodes because I don't want this one being too sharp here. This is going to be my path. And of course, it's always good to save your file. So, Control S, saves your file kind of quick. Now, we're going to create this chain border, right? Now, like I said, a lot of time with. Uh, uh, with dog tags you have a beaded chain so that's one style of chain there's another style of chain that you could do and if you have any real sharp edges in your, in your border when I zoomed in I kind of saw these if you have any real sharp edges you may want to create two nodes on either side of those little points and delete them and that's because it's gonna it'll be much smoother and you have a lot less uh, issues with your chain if it isn't too um, dramatic bumps in the in the um, you know in the rough border here. Um, let's just go ahead and use this now. And what we're going to do, we're going to create two pieces. So my first piece is going to be a piece here. Now I'm not going to create a beaded chain. I'm actually going to make like an anchor style chain, just for a little more drama on this. Um, and then we create a second piece that goes inside it here. So all I did was I create a square. I click the curve, I click the node tool, adjusted the nodes, kind of curve the outside edges, and I duplicate it and then move it inside. And then what I can do real quick is I just kind of make them equal here. So they look like the first link on the chain, then I control L. I'm going to fill it with white uh, and then maybe just a gray so we can, like a, you know, 40% gray. And then I'll take the outline off it. So I just right click on that little X there. And now what I want to do is I want to create a shape, a little square that's about the same size as the width of my chain here, and the same length, right? So say I make the same length, and then I hit the round tool, and I want that totally round on the sides. So you create like a, um, the sideways view of the chain right here. And then I'm going to hit uh, same color. And you can see how that kind of creates the chain. Now what we do is... I'm going to save my file because anytime you blend in Corel, you can end up uh, locking up your program. Um, basically, any program where it's going to do a bunch of processing along a path, you you got to be a little cautious. And I want this chain a little smaller, but I want it visible, right? Um, now, before I actually roll this around, um, I want to have my pieces actually separated. I want to separate them out. Okay, I just want to have them, you know, I don't want to do it together too much because I want them able to be able to turn on each other. So then I'm going to, I'm going to 
click on this one, drag it, right click again. I got two chains now. And then I'm gonna go down here. You're gonna see a couple options here. I'm gonna click on uh, this, this option here. I'm gonna go down and hit blend. And I'm gonna click the first chain. I'm gonna drag it to the second chain. And that creates a blend between the two chains. 20 steps, doesn't matter how many steps at this point. And then you're gonna go over here and you're gonna, um, you wanna click the icon for new path right here. Um, sometimes I get confused in these because uh, they're in different places than older versions of Corel, so I, I don't use them that often, so I, I still have to remind myself which is where. So I create new path, and what that does is it bonds this. So when your blend is selected, you click that new path, you click it, and then you go on the new path. And then you can use some of these other options, which is are, I believe, uh, under here, more blend options. And you say blend along full path, and that throws them all along this whole full path. And then you want to hit it one more time, and you go rotate all objects. And that actually rotates with the edge of the path, and you can kind of see how it's rotating here. Now, right away, I can see, you know, this is probably going to be too large for what I want to do. So I want to kind of shrink these down so it's a little more of a, a smaller chain, right? And I'll adjust this one later. Um, but, and now what I got to do is I have to up the steps of this, right? So you can see how it's rotated around. When I go here, I'm going to go ahead and hit my blend part of it. Not, I, do, I was clicking, when I adjusted all of them, I was adjusting the original one. So you see when you click the original pieces that you started the blend with, um, it'll say control curve down here. And then this is the other control curve. So there's two control curves, and then there's the rest of the blended pieces. And if you click the rest of the blended pieces, then it shows you the blend up here in the property bar. The blend up here is, I want to up the numbers a lot. So I'm going to up the numbers, you know, let's try 100, see how that goes. Um, pretty close, right? So we've got... We've got it here and you say oh well you know what this looks a little weird see how these are kind of leaning up that's probably because one of my bend no um, one of my original pieces let's see what that is um one of them is probably i'm guessing let's see have to find where the control curve is one way to find the control curve if you can't um, i'm going to go wireframe mode here is to just select in wireframe mode to find where they are. You know, you select parts of your curve, just draw a marquee around, and then you can kind of, it'll show you where they're at, right? And so here's your here's your marquee right here. And here's where your two control curves are. So I'm gonna go back to um, enhance mode here so I can see them. Click here, I'm gonna click my one, and I'm gonna click my, my other one, see my, now, this side, the control curve, see how they're tilting? I don't want them tilting like that because that looks weird, so I'm gonna zoom in and then what it is is see how this is this one needs to be tilted down a little bit see when it dives it'll straighten all these out you see that so that second control curve controls kind of this half of the blend and you have to tilt it a little bit to get it to even out now these are these are pretty close to where i want them but i might go just a hair closer right and that's just to make the blend you know kind of work realistic and so and a lot of times you have to add a significant number to get them close enough and this is 120 here, right? So that's pretty close um, to make this chain work. And now what I'm gonna do, is save my file, right? And then I'm gonna remember how many pieces I got, right? I had the two and then I had 120 on the blend. And what I'm gonna do now, to keep things simple, so I'm gonna click in, I'm gonna hold the control key and click in on this path. And that, it'll say control curve down here. I'm gonna control C, control V, and that created a duplicate of the curve and I pasted it on top, okay? That's just easier because then I can leave this bottom piece on, on a blend and I create this top piece on a blend, right? And now I'm going to take this piece right here and I'm going to resize it because I want to match that that uh, chain right there. You see that? I'm going to match that chain. I'm going to take the piece off of it. I just want to make sure that's going to fit and actually look like a chain. So it looks pretty good. It's pretty good there. Okay. And so I'll go ahead and out here I'm gonna take this now and I'm gonna go um, drag it over right quick and then we've got this as a blend with my blend tool blend drag it over this time since we know how many we got to do I'm gonna go ahead and do 120 at the get-go and say 120 hit the enter key and then I go over here hit new path and since I copied it it's gonna go on the path on top so it just fits it right on there and then what I'm going to do is hit these two keys again. I'm going to go blend options, right? I'm going to go blend along full path. And then I'm going to click here. And I'm going to say rotate all objects. 
boom, and then it put them in place, right? Now a couple things, right? Uh, to make this chain really kind of fly here, you're going to notice um, obviously it's not lined in the right spot on here. You can see how it's tilted like the other one was. So I have to, I'm assuming it's going to put them in roughly the same spot. See, it did. So I can rotate it this way. But now what I'm going to do, all right, is not only rotate it, but I'm going to push it a little bit over on this path, right? I'm going to push it over. See how I push the other ones over? And I'm going to push this one over. Okay, so I'm going to, and since it kind of overlapped that other one, I'm going to undo it twice. Okay, and then I'm going to grab both of these. Hold the shift key down. Grab them both, and then slide them both over enough that, uh, you know, let me nudge them over here. Slide them over. Come on, boys. Let's work here. Click one, slide it over. Good. Now click this one, slide it over here, there. So I had to click them a little bit separately, but you get the idea, right? It's going to kind of angle it um, so it lines up in the right way. Now what we're going to do is make sure this blended path here, um, control page up, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and control K now that I got in the right position. Um, and I break it apart. So what I have then is I have three separate pieces. I have the path that it's on, I have the group of all the 120 objects, and then I have the two original objects as separate pieces. So that's why I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my path. Don't need that anymore. I'm gonna take this one, since it's a little out of position, I'm gonna move that up, just straighten it, and I'm gonna find my other one. I'm gonna hit this one, and then I'm gonna hit all of them so that I got 120 objects plus the other two, and I'm going to group them all, right? And then I'm going to shift and page up. And then I'm going to put a little outline on this right here. Um, this outline I'll probably make yeah, a pretty small outline. I want to put it to the back of it. I don't want to cut in too much. Um, make a black outline to the back. And you'll see that's actually so it'll overlap and make this look like a chain. And I'm going to click this. I'm going to drag it down here and drop it to um, this. I'm going to right click. Let's see if I can do it here. So right click on this, drag it down, and then say copy outline here. And then copy outline here. This point is on path. I'm going to right click. Let's go ahead and break this other part. One. Sometimes it gets a little quirky on paths, so I'm going to go ahead and control K, break that apart, get rid of my other path, delete, and then I'm going to take this as a path of all the 120 objects. If these two are not, these are the original ones, so they're separate. And then I want to right click here and I say copy outline here. It should uh, copy fill outline to the group. And that'll do all of them, right? So we got that, and then I select these two, group them all, and then you've got this chain that goes all the way around your image, right? Which is kind of a cool look. So you got this this chain that is really stretched all the way around. Now you could do this where the chain is more spread out than that, and where the links aren't aren't quite as tight, um, that we wouldn't have as much of a tread look to it. Um, that effect you would just put in less steps, you know. Um, if you didn't like this look, you could zoom it back. Go all the way back to when it was, I just controlled Z a bunch of times, go all the way back. And what we do is, when you have them both as uh, as pieces, you can, uh, you can click in here on your path, right? If you want more of a distance to it, you would just take some out, you know, go, go down to 100 again, right? where these just barely overlap and then you can come here get this control rectangle this one and just make it so it barely overlaps the two chains right and that might give you more of a um, so you can kind of play with this right to make it look like okay, this, this will actually make it look like a looser chain and you kind of see how that plays out here out a little more make sure these now see it doesn't line up oh I forgot here let's see I 
had little errors here and there. But what I had to do was that I forgot to do was light, uh, lessen this one. So I got another one that's 120, so I got to make this one 100. Duh. I was wondering why things weren't lining up. So that's why you got to make it even amount, same as the other one. So now your chain is, you know, and if it looks like you need a little more space here, one thing you can do is you can always modify these a little bit. Just stretch them out so you got just a little bit more space, right? And you kind of do this with the other one too, just so they're even. A little more space, and then move this one over, just so it's going to be in the right position on your on your uh, chain. And then you can, again, break them all apart. So this, Control-K, this, we'll Control-K to both. I'll just kind of do this quicker so we can get get it wrapped up and you guys can see um, the final design, the way it looks here. So this one I'm going to just adjust a little bit. Um, this one and the whole, then your whole group here. We'll group it all. And we'll go ahead and add that outline again. Uh, right here. Behind fill, scale, and then I will right click here, drag it here. And I'll say copy fill outline to group. So it did all of them except for these two. And these here, and group everything. And then we'll just drag this right click, fill outline to group. So now I got this whole chain going all the way around and it looks a little bit more chain like, right? And a little bit less tread like. So it could work either way, but this is gives you that feeling of more of a chain. Now rendering it, I'll go ahead and do the render real quick and then we can kind of um, finish this thing up, put that to the front of it. Um, now rendering it, depending on the detail, like this is a pretty small chain, so you you know almost question, well, will rendering even, even really show up great on this or not, but it's kind of fun to do anyway. So let's take a look at how we might render this. Um, what we can do is uh, you just hold the control key down, click, and it's gonna grab that, that child group or that group. Right, so click first is the group of three objects here. Now, one thing you can do with that is if you want to contour it, or if you just want to render it. Now, I want to contour it, and I'll show you why. Because in a chain, to get a metal effect, what you're going to want is like a little bit of a render to it. So, what you can do is, uh, so I got a group of three objects. I'm going to ungroup three times. So I hit the control U U U. Just did it like three times real rapid, and I got 102 objects here. And then I'm going to control L and select them all. And that makes one big curve out of the whole thing. Okay? So now this whole thing is one big piece. And the advantage to that is now I can FX, go ahead here, contour it all, all at once. I'm going to control S, save my file, because it's always a good thing to do before you contour something. I'm going to put my contour pretty low, probably, you know, even like a two, or you could even go a one. I'm going to make a color that's going to show up like a dark gray. Um, I'm going to hit no on my um, outline just so that I don't have to deal with an outline at this point. I'm going to hit apply and it says contour off to that too large. Let's make sure we're set up right. Inside contour, right? One. So I got to go even less. Let's go one. I hit apply. There. Oh, see? Now I need even less. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go zero, five. Hit apply. There we go. That's, that's about right. Zero five will probably work for this. And now I'm gonna, since I got that done, I'm going to go ahead and do the other one. Control U U U 102. Control L. Copy them all. And this is set at five. Hit apply. And it's already created that. Okay. So I have an extra piece here. Now I'm going to control hit it. Make sure it says contour group down here. Control K. And then I'm going to click off on my outline on the top. So there's no outline and it's just an inside piece. Now that group here, what I'm going to do, you're going to see, I got it set as a curve right now. And I'm going to control, um, um, control K, kind of break it apart, and then control G. So that'll give me 102 objects. Now this other one, you may not be able to do that with quickly. So that's a little bit of a trick here. Um, let me think. The fastest way you can do this, this other object, maybe we can leave it grouped. Um, let's go ahead and go back. Leave it grouped. I just control Z all the way back. Here we go. And then we'll go ahead and leave this. I'll 
group it. Let's try contour net. I'm not sure if Corel Draw will contour group. Oh, it did. Great. So if we contour a group, now maybe, control K, let's see, minus this. So now we've got a group of 100 objects. Yeah, excellent. So it did work. I didn't know Corel 7 would do it, but it did. It. So I can control it, un ungroup everything, and then just regroup it. So it's one group of 102, and then I apply this. Um, and then extract it. So now I've got this piece here. I want to leave the outline in the outer groups, but not on the inside one. So I created this inside contour, right? That inside contour now, what I can do, I'm going to see this. I'm going to hold the control key, go to child curve on it. I'm going to go ahead and render this um, as, a, as a fountain fill. You can see here, I'm going to do it like I want the middle here. But I want to create a um, a little bit of a a little bit of a like a metal fill, right? So I'm going to do this, and then I'll move this one over, this one over, and then move right here, and then this one. I'm going to change the render to this. So I got kind of a metal piece in the middle. So I'm going to say OK. I'm going to say OK again. So now I've got this render right here. And what I want to do now is I'm going to kind of move it just a little bit so the ends are off the edges. right? And then we can what we can do is you can put the highlight where you want it. You can put the highlight where you want it. And you want to put it so that the highlight actually goes where the chain isn't, so this way. And what you can do now is you can just drag this over here and you can just say let go and say copy fill outline to group. And it's going to render a whole chain like that, right? And then you can kind of drag this and go here and let go. Let's see if I can get it here. Oh, I gotta break this apart first. It's a contour, so control K gives me two objects, and then this will be 102, and now I can do it here. And got the flaw of the group. And so now it gives me that whole thing. And now if I zoom out, you can see that the advantage of this is now the whole chain is rendered all the way around. And now I can save it. All right, and we can finish this up, make a couple dog tags, and when you're done, you can show this to your client. Um, you know, dog tags don't have to be complicated. We can just create a, a little piece here. Forgive me, army people. I'm not. I wasn't in the fort, but uh, I wasn't in the service, so I, I am not an expert on how to make perfect dog tags. But uh, I'm just going to throw a couple together. So just forgive me if I didn't get them right. That's just for a boot camp. Um, I do have a lot of respect for the military, so <laughs> forgive me here on this, but because uh, I know that there's a certain way to do them. Um, I'm sure that I may not be doing completely accurate, but we just got to get this rendered for our client. Um, so I'm going to put this kind of here, kind of make them look metallic, and I can drag it over, make this one look metallic, go here, and then kind of create a secondary fill there. Overlap it. I put it down one, and then I kind of monkey the fill around a little bit on it, right? Just so it, you know, switches position. Uh, doesn't match up exactly with the other one. Same thing. Right click, put it down one, line it just with the C key, and then I group them. Group and group. And then you kind of tilt them. Uh, but first, I'm going to you know, kind of here hold the control key, kind of make it go straight. I don't want to type out, you know, I might do um, you know, just fitness on one, and then 
amp on the other. Um, and then we'll just make us make it, you know, like a want like kind of a, a font that looks like it's typed on there. It's probably a typewriter font we could use that be more accurate. Actually, let's look real quick. Usually it's Cooper or something. There's a I think there's a typewriter font under C somewhere. Let's see if it's Courier, yes, Courier new, that's it. So it looks like it's typed on there with a typewriter. That usually has a good look for this. And so total, all that up here. Fitness, you can make it a little smaller. This. CP, take this one, same thing. Kind of rendered this way. And then boot camp, click them, drag them over. It's there. Okay, again, hit the C key. And then what I do is I'll group these. And a lot of times I'll actually drag and put the same fill in here. And then what you can do is you can copy this, control D, and then con control page down one, and then you bump it twice and then you fill it black just to make it stand out a little bit same thing here with these kind of drag this over copy fill and then same sort of thing control d control page down bump it twice hit it with the fill here and you can also uh, control d again bump it twice up top and then hit it with white That'll kind of make it look like it's punched into there a little bit. I can do the same thing with the bottom one here. And if the legibility gets to be a problem on your font, you can see I clicked the wrong one. I gotta click select them both and then hold shift deselect it to get the bottom one. Control D, up, 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 and then hit white. And if your legibility gets too rough here, you can always um, kind of add a little, just a little hairline to it, right? Just to make sure the legibility doesn't get lost, and then and I'm gonna save this group, group it back out here, here, and then right click, put your dog tag right there, and then this way, probably do it this way so it reads the opposite. Get it this way. Um, put total fitness on top. Shift page up. And then last thing we want to do is we're going to intersect this chain with uh, with uh, um, dog tags. So we're going to take a circle. We'll draw a big circle here. There. And I'll drag this over and I'll punch a hole in this one too. Now this is a little weird because we actually want the chain to go through this so what we can do in this case is I can kind of ungroup these control ungroup and then I'll duplicate this control D duplicate it twice and then I'll take the top one hit the bottom hit the bottom piece oh, this is grouped still isn't it yep control ungroup control U ungroups it so now I should have two separate pieces yeah and so this one hold the shift key click this one control L and then you get hit your inside one and the bottom one, control L, and now you can see the chain through it, right? So same thing here, ungroup it, duplicate this one extra time, control L, and then you're this one with the bottom one, control L, and then you have your chain come through. So I want the chain to actually come through here, right? And so to do that, uh, probably the easiest, fastest way, um, is a little bit of cheat, but is to just take both of these pieces that are below. I'll save my file before I do this. Um, and group them both, right? Um, and if that doesn't work, well, it looks like I just grouped a piece of it. So if it, uh, that doesn't work, what I can do, you know, let me zoom in here real quick. Make sure I have all my pieces selected. This one, hold the shift key, two, three, and four. And then well, now I can group But when I group all of these, I'm gonna come back out and essentially I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this like control D and then I'm going to go uh, 
shift page up and I throw the chain on top but all I really want is a piece that I'm gonna have this going through here and I'm gonna have it punching out from about here right here to over and through this one and cutting out here so all I need is this piece of chain right here that goes in front and I don't need a part here and I don't need a part here and I don't need the whole thing going around so what I can do to cut it out real quick is I'm just gonna create a shape right here right here like this and then I'll just create another shape over here and over here and then I'll I just double click and with the freehand tool and then I double click this convert them all the curves and then I'm just gonna pull this over like this I'm going to pull this shape over like this, create this whole kind of illusion here. And this is just kind of a quick way to cheat this a little bit. And then I'm just going to take this inside chain right here, and I'm going to hit effects, I'm going to hit power quit, place inside frame, I'm going to throw it inside this frame, and then you see it went inside this frame here, and then I just turn this frame's outline off, right? And then I made it look like the chain, which is going to be duplicated on top, kind of goes through my boot camp sign right here. And that's uh, that's pretty much wrapped up. And then you can uh, take this, you know, kind of distress filter here. You wanna distress it a little bit, you know, kind of roll it on top, make it look a little gritty. I just make like four or five of them. Make that look a little rough. Maybe you don't want to distress your, your chain. Maybe you just want to distress the the boot camp pieces, so I group that. I go down, shift page down, and then I just put my boot camp in the background, shift page down. Oops, I gotta do the background of that, shift page down. And then you can see it's just a stress in my boot camp and not the chain. So that's a quick way to make a chain border. Uh, a couple of dog tags actually make it look like they're woven in. Um, and hopefully it gives you some ideas. And again, don't forget to uh, check out ScreenPrintingArtist.com and you can see some of my cool uh, uh, courses that are coming up. The first one is going to be the Corel Draw Bootcamp. And I'm really excited to uh, have you guys join in.